All right, this video we're going to do is the Intro 20 print. Um, this is going to be another really oddly shaped pocket with lots of arcs. Um, a lot of information that we don't know. But it's also going to be the first time we've used an island. You see in the middle of this pocket, there's a little uh, island standing up, a two inch or one inch diameter island. So it'll be the first time we do that. Basically, anytime you do a pocket island, the rule is it has to immediately follow a pocket boundary. It could be any shape. It could be lines and arcs, contours. It could be a circle, a frame, polygons. It doesn't matter. It just has to be, the milling type will be pocket island, and it has to immediately follow a pocket boundary. And we can have as many islands in a pocket as we need to. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to start a new program, new conversational. Um, stock geometry, more stock geometry. This is going to be a box. Yes, I want to manually size it. Now there's a couple odd numbers on here, and it's only telling me where the corner of the stock is. The center of this feature, or the center of that one inch pocket island, that is actually our zero point on this print. So we're only using the numbers in the bottom left corner there to position the stock where it needs to be. So the length of our stock is 10 and a quarter. The Y is 7.05 and it is 0.85 thick. This X will be a negative 4.3374. And the Y will shift that stock negative 3.5179. And I don't need to raise it up any in Z. So that should put us in the right location for 0, 0 to be the center of that one inch island. So let's go ahead and start programming. We're going to go to input, pro, uh, part programming, milling, lines and arcs. All right, lines and arcs contour. Now we have to figure out again, where are we going to start? What direction are we going to go? I'm going to start at the six o'clock position. I'm sorry, nine o'clock position on that large 3.19 radius. Just because that seems like a good spot. There's really only, you know, there's a couple spots on this one I can figure out, but that's the one I'm going to start with. So it wants to know the X start. Well, the center of that arc is zero, zero. So the starting point is going to be a negative 3.19. So from the center of the arc in the negative direction, the actual radius of that arc, that's where my starting point is in X. Zero will be the starting point in Y. Again, don't let all those numbers around the outside of the stock confuse you. We're going from the center of that large arc. That's zero, zero. Point one. Let's go down 0.5. Um, this doesn't give me a, a tool to use. I'm going to select a half inch end mill from my from my uh, library. So I just click on click on select tool. I'm going to click on the tool column here to group everything by type. I'm just going to go find a half inch end mill. Double click that. It's going to be a pocket boundary. I'm going to go outward, 50% step over, and we'll do a 0.5, I'm sorry, a 0.1 depth. All right, so that's our starting point. So we're going to go to our next segment. It's obviously going to be an arc, regardless if I go clockwise or counterclockwise, it would be an arc. In this case, I'm inside of a pocket. I want a climb mill, so I'm going to go counterclockwise. It's going to be an arc, counterclockwise to an endpoint that I don't know. Once again, we're going to go past that six o'clock position to an angled line. So I don't know the, I don't know the X and Y endpoint, so I'm going to skip them. I do know the center, zero, zero. That was enough information for it to figure out the radius. It calculated that for me. I don't know the sweep angle. If I did, I would put that in here. So that's everything I know about that arc. I'm going to go to the next segment. The next segment is a line. 
It's an angled line meeting up with two radiuses or two arcs. I don't know anything about this line either, except it is an actual line. Just like in the intro 18 print we did previously, I don't know things about this. I don't know the length. I don't know the angle. I don't know the endpoints. I'm just going to leave them blank. Next segment is going to be another arc. Now I'm doing that arc, the 1.12 arc on the far right side of the part. So I'm going to go counterclockwise. I don't know the endpoints, but I know the center. It's going to be 4.06. Again, we're coming from the center of that one inch um, island, not the corner of the part. So 4.06 and zero is going to be the center point. It's a 1.12 radius. And as soon as I put that in, you can see we began to back figure information that we didn't know previously. So we're already making headway. All right, our next segment, I have two options here. I could do a blend arc, or I could do an arc for this next one. I'm just going to do an arc. In this case, I've been going counterclockwise. Now I'm going to go clockwise for this one arc. I don't know the center. I don't know the endpoints. I do know the radius, however, and it is 0.5. Now the next segment will be our final arc. It's counterclockwise. I'm going all the way back to the beginning or the starting point that I did in segment zero. So it's a negative 3.19, uh, zero. The center is zero, zero. It filled in the rest of the information for me. So now I should be able to draw that pocket. there we have our pocket. Now all I need to do to add an island to this, again, is in the um, program review, I just need to add a pocket island immediately following this pocket. So if I go to block one and hit next block, or I go to the block after my island or my uh, pocket boundary. I can insert a block before, however I want to get this block in there. It would depend on whether or not this was a new program I'm writing or I'm adding an island to something that was already there probably, then I would use the review screen. But anyway, I'm going to go to milling circle. The center of that circle is zero, zero. It's a 0.5 radius. Now at this point, I'm going to change my milling type to pocket island. You'll see that most of that information has gone away. It doesn't need to know how fast, what tool, how deep, because it's an island in the middle of a pocket. The pocket has all that information in it. It just literally needs to know the X and Y data that it cannot violate. So if I speed this up and hit my draw again, you'll see that we have an island standing in the middle of that, just like the print shows.